Welcome. We have Marcus Rab here with the talk Configuration Revolution. Okay. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for joining me here today. Uh, so, uh, does everyone uh, understand me? Is the audio okay? So, thank you. So, yeah, we have the title Configuration Revolution. So, that's quite a claim, and I hope I can back it up uh, in this talk. Uh, so, my name, as already said, is uh, Markus Raab, and Thomas uh, Wasser will also support me later with a demonstration. Um, yeah, so let us start with uh, some questions. Uh, so, the first one so, who of you has edited a configuration file? So, okay, yeah, like I assumed, everyone edited a configuration file already. Uh, so who has heard of Electra? Ready? Okay, so nearly no one, so that's good. So, and someone also using Electra? So, okay, so maybe if someone wants to start uh, using Electra, we also have t shirts uh, afterwards. So, uh, let's see. Um, okay, then, uh, so two more serious questions. So, uh, who of you has designed a new configuration file format? So, yeah, there, there are quite some. And who has implemented a configuration file parser? Okay, so also, okay. So, uh, we ask these latter questions in a survey. And I think it's the same picture as we have here today. 25% um, implemented a new configuration file parser. So that means every force uh, has done so. And only 30%, so only 5% more, used some existing uh, configuration system library or APIs. So that's nearly the same. Um, Okay, so uh, yeah, how to not change uh, the situation is quite clear. To try to establish a standard for configuration file formats would add one more. So I, I thought 13 years ago this might be useful, and, and we had the idea that every configuration option should have one configuration file, but actually we just added one more format, and it did not help at all. Um, so, yeah, keep adding new passes and configuration file formats uh, in an unorganized way actually led to the chaos we are currently in. So, uh, this uh, picture basically uh, demonstrates um, a, a small part uh, of how, how the configuration uh, landscape looks today. So, we have many isolated solutions for operating systems, for desktop systems, and so on and so forth. Within these platforms, we sometimes have a really nice integration, which works out well. So two examples, the, uh, the GNOME platform or the key, KDE platform, they have put a lot of e effort that everything runs smoothly uh, within them. But other uh, uh, applications or other platforms are not integrated in the system. So when, when you want uh, to have from GNOME uh, one of the KDE uh, settings, there's no easy way to get this configuration. So, yeah. Uh, you might already know uh, this slide from 2004. Uh, something very similar was shown. Um, and, yeah, initially, Electra did not consider that there are also huge advantages with this situation. So let's change the picture a little bit and, and just don't draw the red arrows. And here we see that we actually have a really modular system. We have a system where applications are really decoupled from each other. And, and this is basically something we want. Um, so at the moment, we don't have a single point of failure. So we can rescue any system with, with a simple editor. Um, and another advantage is uh, that we have um, a diversity and developers can choose from many different options, how they want the configuration system. Do you want JSON or XML? Every, everyone can choose. And, and this is, of course, also um, a great uh, thing. Uh, it's a diversity, it's a strength uh, of free, Libre, and open source system floss. So uh, why should we care at all about this problem? Uh, in other ecosystems, we also have a great diversity, many different solutions doing the same. For example, video formats, 
We, we have plenty of uh, video encoding libraries or video player libraries, and, and they uh, coexist nicely, and, and, and there's no problem with this. There is a reason why configuration is different. Um, there's a really important difference of configuration and other libraries. And the difference is called misconfiguration. Configuration is not only used by developers, but is also used by system administrators and end users from a completely different perspective. Um, and I personally find this duality of, of user and developer, uh, developer interface in, in the same system really fascinating. So, uh, so what is misconfiguration? As you know, configuration has many constraints. For example, a configuration setting might need to be a valid uh, file. It might need to be an, a valid IP address. It might, might be a, uh, an, an integer. It might be that it must be lower than the number of CPUs, and so on and so on. There are many, many constraints. And at the moment, we demand from users, from develop, uh, uh, for users and system administrators that they manually find a solution. So, uh, so basically, the brain uh, as constraint solver to uh, think of all these hidden constraints that, that are somewhere hidden in, in the system. Uh, and and uh, it gets even worse. They have to um, uh, solve all these constraints without a proper feedback. So at the moment, the application might just crash. If you, if you have some memory variable, or like I experienced it myself, uh, for example, I had a U limit uh, of, of some specific uh, size, and after KDE upgrade, suddenly KDE crashed in the middle uh, of, of starting. The, uh, yeah, the, the problem was that they have a, a JavaScript interpreter which allocates something which was not there before. And so it's really easy to get into it. So misconfiguration is not only some cloudy problem other people or big companies are having. We are all facing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so, yeah, then, yeah, and uh, misconfiguration uh, can also lead uh, to system failures. Uh, so if, if some um, application or some server does not start up, and this uh, application is central, for example, like this JavaScript uh, part, this is essential for KDE to, to function, uh, yeah, th th then, uh, then we uh, basically um, make our complete system non-functional. Um, in uh, flaws particularly, uh, it's, uh, th uh, the, the problem is even a little bit worse uh, because uh, of the huge variety we have. So we have to uh, keep many syntax, configuration file syntax in mind, and so on, and so on. OK, so standardization doesn't really help. So what else can we do? And yeah, we, we are all developers here. We know that we can solve any problems uh, by adding another layer of abstractions, unless the problem is that we have too many layers of abstractions. Uh, but for configuration, uh, we are nowhere near of too many layers of abstractions. So the usual abstraction we currently have is that we have bits in a configuration file. So we, we are still, uh, basically, if, if, the, if configuration would be a, a file system, uh, we would be on the lowest level. We are still uh, talking about if the equal sign means that key is a value or if the hash sign or the, the semicolon uh, introduces a, a comma. So basically, we are on the lowest level we can get. So and I propose to not, even, to not only go one uh, letter up uh, in this uh, abstraction, uh, but to go two uh, letters uh, steps up. So, uh, yeah, if uh, the one up would be uh, to introduce a registry. This was basically the proposal 13 years ago. Um, and the problem here is uh, that we need a huge consensus of how this registry must look like. And it's, it's impossible to get such, such a consensus. Um, so in, instead, uh, I propose we should specify how the configuration access works. So we specify 
I am this application, and I use this configuration file in this format. So, uh, so this is uh, two, uh, going two levels up. Uh, so then we need only a little agreement. The, the agreement is basically only how the specification uh, looks like, how to describe the system, but not how the configuration files look like. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm a little bit over time. So we have uh, five uh, parts uh, in, in this talk. So the first one um, will be a little, uh, I will shorten it a bit. It's a popular ways uh, which are present in configuration today. Uh, then uh, we have um, uh, how uh, to reduce or hide configuration and, and why this is a problem. Um, and then I will uh, talk about what, what I said in the beginning about the configuration design and how it affects modularity. Uh, and in this fourth part, we will also have a demonstration uh, of, of the specification language. And yeah, if, if there's time, I, I will go uh, and show a little bit uh, about tooling, uh, which is provided by Electra. Okay, so uh, we bef before we dive into the content again, uh, so please uh, say, so it's a little bit abstract what I'm saying, so and, uh, it's important to not lose you. So if you have any uh, questions, uh, please uh, ask them Im immediately. Um, and uh, there's also a link, so you can also uh, post uh, questions there uh, if, if you're too shy to ask. Uh, he will look uh, there and, and uh, relay uh, the questions to me. Um, Okay, so uh, what we did to find out what the problem is. So um, I, uh, we used uh, uh, several methods uh, to find out. Uh, the first one, uh, we made a large-scale uh, questionnaire uh, where 672 persons uh, visited uh, the questionnaire and 286 uh, gave answers. Is someone here who visited uh, this questionnaire? Okay. So, yes, thank you, uh, only one, okay. So, thank you uh, a lot uh, for visiting it and, and participating. Uh, we also had to check if what the people are saying uh, actually reflects the reality. And then we did also a, a large-scale source code analysis of these uh, 16 applications, uh, which are shown here. And uh, we looked uh, at all get and occurrences which are in these applications. Um, yeah, then we also do, did case study and user studies. Uh, and this user study will be presented tomorrow. There's also uh, a poster outside uh, showing a little bit about this user study. Okay, then, yeah, so the first insight uh, was about popularity uh, in configuration. So and this might be not surprisingly for you. Uh, that command line arguments and environment variables are the, the most used uh, ones and the most popular uh, configuration uh, systems today. This was completely surprising for the research community, which had no research whatsoever about uh, these two most uh, popular uh, ways. Uh, and yeah, in, in the source code, uh, we found 2,683 uh, uh, call sites of getEnd. Um, so the uh, first uh, abstraction, I can't go into the, uh, the details, unfortunately, uh, but Electra introduces uh, namespaces. And these different uh, kinds uh, of configuration sources, uh, li like, for example, a command line and environment, uh, they get different parts uh, within uh, these uh, namespaces. Um, and whenever, um, uh, so we basically have a, a kind of uh, file system with new names. And whenever uh, this uh, passes start with slash, it basically means consider an, any one of these uh, different uh, namespaces. Yeah, then uh, we, of course, uh, use uh, the well-known key value abstraction. Um, so it's, it's uh, widely known uh, that key value is a common structure among all configuration files. Um, so, yeah, and, and here we, we have uh, two examples uh, of, of basically the same content, once in any and, and a little bit more verbose uh, with XML. 
Um, and then uh, we have uh, uh, some other uh, formats uh, which are supported uh, by Electra. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, this abstraction is, is quite nice, uh, but um, it is uh, not enough uh, because uh, it does not deal with complexity and it also doesn't really deal with this user interface problem. So to understand the complexity, let's look at the trend in number of configuration options we have today. So uh, TNEXU uh, is one uh, of the other uh, misconfiguration researchers. Um, he also advocates uh, simpler configuration design. And in the study, he found that there's a clear trend towards more and more configuration settings. Um, so and 52% of these uh, configuration options um, are rarely used, if at all. Um, and yeah, so... I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know, but, but uh, to, to make sure what, what this means, for example, if Apache in 2006 has about 300 options, and uh, here in, six, uh, in uh, 2014, it already has 600. And uh, this is a double of uh, configuration options, but of course it's not only a double of the configuration space, but uh, we have... Uh, two to the power of 300, uh, to the two to the power of 600, if all of these variables were bullsh bullsh uh, yeah, and, and they are not. So uh, we have a huge explosion in, in the configuration space. And my own research focused on getenv uh, because it's more uh, popular and it's widely standardized, and I could also confirm uh, the same trend. Um, so the trend is uh, not only limited to configuration files. So here we have uh, Firefox uh, and, and curl. And yeah, for example, here in, in, in Firefox, we have nearly 1,500 basically hidden configuration options we, we, which we can use uh, by environment variables. Um, so uh, why not simply get rid of rarely used options uh, like suggested? In the survey, as in the question the survey, we ask the question, why, why not remove uh, the options? Um, and 30% uh, answered that configuration should not be reduced at all. And I, I found it really surprising here yeah, uh, because this was a multiple choice question. And if you choose no, you could not say any of the yes reasons. And, and there were many good uh, yes reasons, uh, or I thought uh, it would be a good reason uh, to, to say yes. Uh, for example, to, to simplify a code maintenance or because the, the options are actually not used. Um, so we are in a quite problematic situation. So uh, users and admins are usually overwhelmed by the many options they have. They basically are searching for the knob um, they, they need. And, and, and these are only very few. Uh, and, but developers, according to the survey, seem to be reluctant to not remove uh, configuration. So first, there's a, a relatively clear point, um, which I violated, I think many others do also, uh, also violated. Uh, we need to stop adding configuration options just because we can't decide in the implementation. So that's really not a good reason. We should see configuration as a user interface. And if there's no user who wants to use this, we should not uh, expose this configuration option. And uh, then there is a, a second uh, part to it. So we need a way to derive uh, default configuration. And this way we can break the controversy whether or not to reduce configuration. So some uh, uh, so software already s showed us in really successful ways uh, that this is possible. For example, XServer or GPS daemon. Uh, as um, yeah, many are maybe old enough to know, in XServer uh, several years ago, you had to write an XServer file and specify what the resolution is and, 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 and so on and so on. And at the moment, this is not necessary anymore. XServer simply detects which hardware you have and, and uh, does some best effort, which, which uh, works in nearly all cases. 
And GPS daemon is even more extreme in, uh, here. Um, so, um, but according to the study, we should also keep the possibility override individual settings as needed. And XServer allows exactly that, this, so you can still write a configuration file if you want to. So, so we really need to go beyond XServer and GPS daemon, so only hardware detection, but we need to generalize uh, this lesson. So wouldn't it be nice if shortcuts uh, work across different platforms like GNOME uh, and KDE? And wouldn't it be nice if applications automatically switch to the defaults of the desktop we started? And wouldn't it be nice to have a more consistency uh, between uh, the applications? And according to the survey, um, we also agree that good defaults are really important. So 80% said, yeah, we, we, really need uh, we really need good defaults. Um, why are we not doing it then? And the reason is really simple. Um, it is, uh, it's too much effort to do it. So it is difficult to ask other sources to get better defaults. There's only little software which actually does the, this effort. For example, in LibreOffice, you have a desktop detection code and it's nearly 400 lines of code just to detect at which desktop we are running. And of course, we can't put this burden on every application out there to detect everything ourselves. And, and here there were also other questions, for example, to de detect network bandwidth and so on and so on. We, th these are things which are not easy to do. So it, um, so it is uh, too expensive at the moment to do. So, and, and I suggest uh, that we add uh, a specification for a configuration. Uh, and in this specification, we can describe defaults. And these defaults are not only some hard-coded value, but as, as something derived from the system we're in. For example, which desktop we have, which hardware we have, uh, which operating system we have, and so on and so on. Um, so, and we also introduce the concept of plugins to implement uh, the specification. So, dependencies which might occur, for example, for desktop detection, you might need some uh, X server specific parts. Uh, so, these dependencies are not your concern, but they are the concerns of the plugins implementing the specification. Um, Okay, so, um, yeah, and, and one of the uh, key features here that the specification can be written uh, like it is, it, uh, like it's a configuration file. But uh, also, uh, always think about it, uh, uh, it's also in the demonstration afterwards. So we have different meta levels. So one meta level is the configuration file we have, and the other meta level is which specifies which configuration files are possible or if some value is absent, what would be the default? So we always have these two meter levels. Okay, let's go to the configuration uh, specification and the demo. Um, so yeah, let us uh, remind us of the, why we think that a configuration uh, uh, needs some special treatment, uh, which was uh, the misconfiguration. So yeah. Uh, not every configuration option can be derived. For example, we need to tell the system which IP address uh, we have. Um, so sometimes we require manual input, and uh, manual input may lead uh, to misconfiguration. So the state of the art is to encode the specification validations, transformations within the source code of the application. And with some luck, uh, we, uh, the applications that detect problems, uh, which are in the configuration file, often they do not. So there's a lot of research uh, where it is not detected or too late detected. Um, but actually, it's not enough to detect the problems at the application start. What we actually want is that the wrong, the wrong configuration never ends up in the configuration file. We want, uh, we want uh, that already uh, at, at persisting the configuration files, uh, wrong values are detected. So, yeah, uh, so Yoda basically tells us, if I'm allowed to paraphrase him, uh, separate the specifications you must. So we propose uh, that uh, such validation code uh, should move to the plugins. 
and um, the, so the, we get this uh, picture here. Um, so this is not a configuration file, but it's a specification. So uh, one of the important part is, is for a mount point basically means that uh, everything below this hierarchy, so the, with the slash, uh, we, we build up a hierarchy, um, it, uh, should be in a different configuration file. And here we say uh, everything below here should be in uh, etc. hosts. Um, then uh, we can specify individual options. For example, we can say, and we will also see it in the demonstration afterwards, uh, that the local host, uh, it's not only an IP for four address, but an application might specify, or th that's an address, but the system administrator might additionally uh, want to be sure that it's uh, some specific, so uh, in, in, the, in the local host um, a, a network address uh, range. Um, and so the specifications are modular and extensible, um, and uh, so there are basically no built-in um, specifications, but everything is written in plugins or, or by external tools. So it is, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, and then we have also different generation techniques, uh, which are of course not, um, yeah, uh, maybe a little bit later future. Um, for example, we can also generate code uh, out of these specifications. Um, or more practical, we can uh, generate auto-completion. Uh, so if we specify which command line options we uh, expect, we can generate files which uh, auto-complete uh, what, uh, what, what our tool accepts. Then we can also generate GUIs, web UIs. I will, I will show you an example later there. Of course, documentation. And we can uh, generate all the validation we need in the persistence layer. Okay, and we will show this uh, now to you in a demonstration. Okay. Okay, let's uh, start uh, with the uh, Hello World. So, um, yeah, here below uh, we see uh, there is um, a, a, a configuration file we are watching. It's uh, this example uh, in like you see here. At the moment, this configuration file is not present. Uh, so now we do a KDB set of this hello, okay? And when we do it, we get a section hello. Um, and yeah, let's uh, continue with another set so that we can also um, set a, a key value. And uh, now let's say uh, hello world to Belgium at Fostem. So, and yeah, we, we uh, have uh, written this down in this uh, configuration file. And uh, most importantly, we can also introspect. We can, uh, can also query what is in, inside uh, this configuration files. So when we uh, get uh, this uh, world uh, Belgium, uh, yeah, we, we, we get uh, this value. And that's what's important here and what's one of the goals of Electra that applications see the configuration exactly the same uh, like uh, administrators see it. So at the moment, there are different passes involved and not everything is so easy. The idea is that we see completely the same things. So we can also remove uh, this uh, option. So, okay. And uh, yeah, so it's now gone. And we can, uh, now we are at a different uh, meta level. We can specify which default should it have if it's not uh, present. And uh, so uh, now we have this uh, set meta command, which says the default value should be default at FOSTEM. And if we get this value now, even though it's not in the configuration file, as you see, when we get it, we get this default at FOSTEM. So we've, what we have achieved here, we have it externally to the application. So it's not encoded within the application. So all tools also use the correct defaults. And it's not anything uh, only in the applications anymore. Okay, and uh, so um, now we uh, go a little bit into the concept of mounting. And um, so let's uh, list uh, which plugins uh, we have with Calibri list. So we are searching now uh, for a host plugin because now we want to manipulate the etc. host file like it was shown before. 
Um, so, yeah, there are many here that at last we see storage, so let's list uh, storage plugins, whatever they are. And, and here we see, for example, oh, there's a host plugin, okay, let's try out, let's mount uh, with this uh, host, uh, or the card be info uh, host, then we get uh, some information uh, about a host file. And here in, is a tutorial, and it, it says uh, how we can mount it. So there are these uh, recommendations. Okay, let's try to mount it. So there was a copy and paste error. We, we did not use sudo. What's important here is this, these specifications are a part of user and, uh, and et, in et cetera. So you need to have uh, sudo rights, and it even uh, suggests to use uh, sudo um, uh, for, for mounting it here. Okay, so now uh, we will watch the host file down below here. Um, and uh, with this mount command, we have connected uh, uh, the, uh, our configuration system with this file. Uh, and now we uh, can get uh, the local host IP address. Um, we can also get the IP for six uh, address. And uh, then we, yeah, and then we uh, try to get um, a FOSTEM IP ad address, so which is there. Okay, and we also see we have tab completion even for keys which are not here because we have a specification of what's, what should be there. So, so we can complete and the tooling can help us uh, with uh, what should be there. And uh, so now let's do what uh, the CIA hackers also try to do. Let's set some invalid IP address uh, like we had in the example before. And uh, here we see uh, that it's not a valid IP address. And this is actually checked in a plugin with operating system facilities. So it uh, gets it, uh, get hosts by address. Um, and and uh, it said that this uh, name of service is not known. So we cannot resolve this to IP address. So we can have really sophisticated checks, m much uh, beyond what we could do with a regular expression or something like that. Okay, so now let's uh, do a, a valid um, IP address again. And now we look a little bit at the specification. So we unmount uh, this uh, host again, system uh, hosts, and then uh, let's see how the, um, yeah, how the specification looks like. So it's exactly the same I've shown before in, 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 in the slide. Um, and uh, so here, uh, we uh, can now mount the specification to the specification namespace I talked uh, about, and um, then uh, we can uh, uh, apply the specification on the system that's currently necessary for mount points. Um, and uh, so now uh, we can um, use the LS meter, uh, and we see uh, we can also introspect specifications. So the tooling could actually look into the specification and tells us, oh, this is an IP for four address. So in the GUIs, you could actually have checks uh, for, for what, uh, what uh, this is. Okay, and yeah, then let's uh, set uh, this local host wrongly. Um, so, and, and here we have the simple validation check, which could be uh, added by administrators uh, afterwards. Um, and and uh, this is the message, this local IP must be uh, written within uh, this uh, particular network. Okay. So anything about the demonstration? Do you want to see something more? Okay. Thank you. Then uh, let's go over the rest of the presentation. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, so basically we get three, fe three features. I repeat it a, a little bit here. The, uh, we have an introspection of the whole system configuration and also of the whole specification of the system. So like the elephant l looking on, on the world, uh, we can introspect uh, what we have. Um, and we have a reusability. So plugins can be used anywhere in the system. So you write a plugin to check uh, network configuration once. It can be used by every application. And we have a system which is much more safe. 
So we prohibit that any invalid configuration, so everything which does not adhere to the specification, we reject uh, such configurations. And uh, we achieve uh, this integration we have. So Electro does not introduce uh, some new uh, technologies, um, but uh, it, it uh, basically uh, allows uh, to connect uh, these different uh, um, uh, technologies. So, uh, for example, uh, if you have uh, a GNOME uh, application, uh, we can uh, simply say in the specification language, if you are running in a KDE desktop, please use the shortcuts which are in here. So we, we, all, we have some external specification where, con where we can connect uh, all these uh, applications to together. And uh, we only need very little consensus. So one distribution could say, I want to connect this, and the other distribution uh, can say, no, I, I don't want it. I want the status quo. Um, and we can use all the brilliant parsers and validators we, uh, we already have uh, here in, in, in our uh, system. OK, then a short about how to electrify, so how to use Electra. So there are three ways to do it uh, with uh, degreeing of how much you like Electra, basically. So the, the, the first uh, one is uh, if, if, you, uh, if the application has nothing to do with Electra at all, so we have a completely unchanged source code, an unchanged binary, uh, we, we can use interception techniques. So we can use uh, preloading mechanisms. And we already dis did this for getenv and for configuration file. So the application thinks it gets its own configuration, but in reality it gets a generated configuration file from Electra. So if, if the um, applications want to use Electra, they can write a specification. And in the specification, and they can also link, again, uh, these bindings uh, they want to use. Um, and, uh, and the third uh, options, uh, the third option we have is we can also generate source code. And with these generation techniques, we have the advantage. It is actually statically guaranteed that every configuration option which is used must be in a specification in the type as specified. So for new applications, I would recommend uh, to use this. In all three cases, we do not have any configuration logic reside, inside the applications, but instead um, uh, we have the logic within the specification. Um, so you do not need to change the architecture of your um, application to use it. So now uh, let's uh, strive in the last minutes about some, some things, what Electra actually is. Uh, so Electra is a small and fast uh, library. It does not have any dependencies. It's co uh, completely written in C. It does not have a daemon. So the security is as it was before. So it does not matter if Electra is used or not from security point perspective. Uh, so applications uh, using Electra without specification work as before. So they get their own configuration file and write to their own configuration file. And, and, and basically, the, the rest of the system is, is, is not affected. So it's a non-invasive change. Um, so there are many, many language bindings at the moment. Uh, for example, Shell, Lua, Python, uh, Java, Ruby, and Haskell. And uh, these language bindings can not only be used to, uh, to, um, within applications to use Electra, but you can also use this, all these languages uh, to implement new plugins which do this uh, logic and do this validation. Um, so if you are fluent in some of the language, you're welcome uh, to, to contributing. So there are uh, 80 uh, plugins uh, currently uh, used. Uh, best you look at the homepage uh, to see what, what we already implement. Um, and uh, yeah, there are some uh, things you can do with the KDB command uh, we, we have already uh, uh, shown you before. Um, but what's really important here is that it's nearly trivial to write a new uh, a tooling like this. Um, so yeah. Um, and um, then uh, we also have web UIs and uh, graphical user interfaces. And in the web UI, um, it, uh, it, uh, we actually read the specification. And if the specification say, oh, that's a, bullsh uh, a Boolean, uh, then uh, we get uh, checkboxes. Um, and, and it's not even possible uh, to, to input uh, something wrongly. 
So that's uh, because of the introspection uh, we allow of the specification. Okay, um, there are already uh, packages of various distributions. Not all of them are official. In, in, in the first row, there are the uh, official of, of the distributions. And uh, really a thank you to, uh, for, for all the uh, distribution, uh, for the maintainers. Uh, maintaining is really a hard work. And Electra is already used widely in commercially. And, and so um, that's also the reason why I'm here. Uh, so the whole reason why Electra exists from the beginning to now is only to support uh, the FLOSS ecosystem because I think that's really a key point of usability that uh, out-of-the-box behavior works as, as it should. And I think here we really need to catch up. Um, and in, in the FLOSS ecosystem, Electra is not used as much. So it's uh, basically only used in the Oranos uh, color management system and in progress uh, are these uh, open ICC standard, then LCD block and meshing kit. So uh, if, if you like to, uh, for your project, uh, you're welcome to do, and you also get the T-shirt as uh, said already. Um, for administrators, uh, there is uh, a, a talk tomorrow. So, so there, uh, it's already used uh, also as administration facility. So who is working on Electra, and it's not uh, only we two, and not, uh, unfortunately not everyone uh, is on this picture. It's hard to get uh, um, everyone on the same picture. So here we have a list uh, of the names who are working on Electra, but unfortunately we don't have the time uh, to go into these topics. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, we are basically doing the, the, the hard uh, stuff, which is sometimes not so fun, uh, like some optimizations, uh, but there are also many fun parts like implementing uh, configuration parsers, for example, and yeah, so we, we basically left uh, these uh, fun uh, parts uh, for you. Um, so we are, uh, at the moment, we have a, a very clear focus that we want uh, to publish uh, 0.1 Electra. There are, there are different uh, parts relevant uh, to it, yeah, one are these uh, fail-safe uh, user interfaces I already talked about. Um, then uh, we want uh, to improve the type system. Um, and uh, then also optimization are important. For example, one is you might have asked about, so if you're using so many different languages in the plugins, uh, doesn't, uh, it doesn't the performance uh, suffer? And for example, there's one optimization, an MMAP cache, uh, which basically, um, if, if you have just passed the configuration file before and did all this uh, validation, uh, we, we just uh, get a, a result. Okay, um, so the conclusion is, uh, what we want to achieve is a really great out-of-box experience. Um, so we want uh, to calculate better defaults using the specification I propose. Um, and, of course, it's all about uh, sharing uh, these different options. And, um, yeah, and uh, I think that uh, with the specification configuration settings are shareable uh, across uh, the growing communities we luckily have. Uh, and we need a language to communicate uh, between uh, these different uh, communities. So, so if, for example, if you look at the free desktop, there are endless discussions which configuration file format to use. And I think we really, really stop, should stop these uh, discussions and, and use a language which is, which is appropriate for this kind of problem. Um, and so uh, yeah, uh, we really want uh, to, uh, better tooling to edit uh, configuration files. Um, so Electra is not some magic box which automatically uh, will resolve all configuration uh, file problems. Uh, of course, um, the design is still, uh, so which configuration options an application has, is of course still um, for, uh, done by the applications. So, yeah, uh, but Electra uh, builds up a framework uh, which enables uh, us as community uh, to better face uh, these problems. So, um, yeah, here are some uh, resources. Uh, so, yeah, please join uh, the new configuration community, Floss never had. So, please drop an email or contact me, so I will be ar uh, around here. So, don't be, uh, be shy. Uh, if you don't know how to uh, talk to me, just ask for a sticker. We have plenty of sticker and, and can give you one. 
So see you tomorrow at the talk at 12.30. So thank you for your attention. Are there some questions? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Jack. Hey. Hi. Thank you for your talk. Um, thank you. I have a question. So, this all assumes that configuration is just relating to file formats. Um, if you believe that configuration is more than just file contents and file formats, is there a way to extend this to specify other things and other types of states? Hmm. Um, can you repeat the last part? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you believe that configuration is more than just what's in Etsy files and so on, yeah. is there a way to extend this to support other kind of declarations of other states? So declaration of states that are not just in text files. So states? States. To other states. So I'm not sure if, if I, got, I got this question. So, so basically, yeah, they are, you mean if the, if the configuration scripts or, or which kind of? states mm, okay yeah, so yeah but, but basically we tried with many configuration file formats it's, uh, they are easy to um, integrate so we did not have any problem for, for yeah okay okay uh, I'm very confused now to be honest uh, because I already uh, heard about and tried uh, ages or how that should be pronounced it uh, uh, the library for parsing and generating configuration that is probably behind uh, Lip Electra. And now I'm not sure what really Lip Electra is, because uh, from what I remember from my tries with uh, AGs, uh, it uh, looks uh, similar or the same. So what is the difference between uh, uh, AGs and uh, Electra, or which part is uh, part of uh, AGs and what, uh, yeah. what Electra? So, so it basically has nothing to do. So uh, our GEAS, so our, our GEAS, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's basically a, a way how to implement configuration file parsers. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's not really a business of Electra. So Electra can uh, use our GEAS and actually does. We have a plugin. Uh, using it. So, so the idea of uh, Electra is uh, to write the specifications, how the default values look like, how uh -huh. the configuration design looks like. And Augeas does not concern about this at all. Augeas only adds another parser. So in Augeas you actually yeah, uh, introduce one more way how to pass configuration files. You do not get these unified ways. The idea of Electra is that applications actually move their parsers to plugins. Mm -hmm. and, and it should be the only way to get configuration. So uh, Augeas adds one more uh, parser, uh, which can be used uh, by different tools. But uh, when you yeah. show it, uh, um, uh, getting uh, some variable settings uh, to configuration files, this is exactly what, uh, what uh, Agas, uh, <laughs> AGS uh, do. Uh, when I tried it, uh, it uh, the interface is the same. So, no, it, it, it doesn't get you uh, the, the view the application has. So it, it passes uh, the, the file and, and gets some new.